and welcome to game six of the state's tournament here at the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast. I am your MC, Devo. With me today, we have Kells. Hello. How are you? <laughs> we have Andy. I predict in this episode, I'm going to kick Devo in the giggle berries. <laughs> We'll see whose giggle berries get kicked. Mm -hmm. We have the sensei, Neil. Well, my giggle berries are safe because I'm not playing. (laughs) I get to kick you guys. (laughs) (laughs) So as Davo said, this is game six of the state's tournament. Uh, The way our tournaments work, first place winner gets... uh, three points second place gets two third place gets one and as of game the end of game five davo has 14 tournament points andy has 10 and kells has six uh so it's it's in reach of being a a a runaway we're close to being a runaway and the way the game works is each week we have a theme and within that theme we've got six categories six categories of four questions each each question is worth 10 points with a few bonus points thrown in here and there and then a final question which is worth up to 100 points and because this is the state's tournament each theme is a state or states in the original 13 colonies and today the theme is new jersey and pennsylvania oh Uh, friend of the show joel has been eagerly awaiting his home state (laughs) <laughs> he's a jersey boy i lived in new jersey for uh one year really? well I you're prob- you've got an edge on me i think i took a train through new jersey once when i was like 11 years old but we didn't stop and then i saw it once from manhattan i think <laughs> so devo do you want to talk about the taxing i will This tournament, for our special rule, we have a rule called taxation, whereby a player can choose another player. For example, I could choose Andy. And should they get the answer correct, I would tax that answer, getting 70% of his points. We get to do that once a game. Mm -hmm. Who came up with the 70% tax rate? Because that's, uh, that's pretty high. It's pretty onerous, but uh, I think that was me. Dave was a socialist. Well, it, it's worked out for me so far this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> He's killing it. All right. You guys ready to get started? Uh-huh. Category one in New Jersey and Pennsylvania is famous people. Mm-hmm. All right. Plenty of famous people in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Question one, what actor, widely known for his main character role in a 1940s Christmas movie, was raised in Pennsylvania? Locked in. Locked in? Uh, Locked in. Start with Kels. Bing Crosby. Devo? I said Jimmy Stewart. Was that supposed to be a Jimmy Stewart impression? (laughs) No. No. I just got something in my throat. Because it wasn't. I got something in my throat. That's what that was. That might have been the worst Jimmy Stewart impression I've ever heard. You look, man, I wasn't quite ready. I hadn't thought it all the way through. Clearly. And I'm probably wrong. Andy, what's your answer? It's definitely Jimmy Stewart. Uh, It's a wonderful light came up right after World War II. It is Jimmy Stewart. Whoa, whoa, great. Oh, boy. (laughs) Um, wow <laughs> oh boy i, I yeah, mean at least really that terrible. time i could tell you were kind of trying to be jimmy stewart it's jimmy stewart and jace <laughs> <laughs> question two born in 1989 in Reading, pennsylvania this singer songwriter is a multi-platinum 10-time grammy award winner who won the ama's artist of the decade in 2019 who is it 1989 that's what I said. Youngin. By the Locked way, I should in. mention these questions are, for the most part, courtesy of Dan and Allison, who have been providing pretty much all the questions for this tournament so far. The Danison is in full effect. 
Luke Anderson. <laughs> um, uh, I'm gonna lock in. This this makes sense. 1989, ten time Grammy winner, Artist of the Decade in 2019. Yes. Wow. He's over there going, but baby metal doesn't work for 2019. Baby metals for, and they were born in Tokyo. <laughs> Not Reading, Pennsylvania. I'm just going to make a guess. Locked in. All right, let's start with Devo. Billie Eilish. Andy. Taylor Swift. She was born. Oh, I forgot all about Swift. Kels. I think she has an album titled 1989. Taylor Swift. She does indeed have an album called 1989. And it is Taylor Swift. I forgot all about Taylor Swift. (laughs) Question three. Born in 1915, this American singer and actor starred in films such as From Here to Eternity and was also part of Tommy Dorsey's orchestra until pursuing a solo career in 1946. Who is it? Wow. I'm locked in. How many times have you seen From Here to Eternity, Kells? I haven't, but I know a few people in it. I'm and I'm going to go with the one that makes sense to me. <laughs> All right, I'm locked in. Andy? I, I'm I'm almost positive I'm right. It's Frank Sinatra. I guess I just didn't realize he was actually a part of Tommy Dorsey's orchestra. I just thought he performed with Tommy Dorsey's orchestra. So what, what would the difference be? I mean, he, well, Kels? <laughs> I also went with Frank Sinatra because he is one of the three people I know in From Here to Eternity. And Devo. I guessed Frank Sinatra because he's a singer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he ain't no Strange. band leader. <laughs> the correct answer is Frank Sinatra. All right. Question four. I'm going to butcher this name. Um, mm-hmm. Gatton Matarazzo is an actor born in 2002 who was raised in New Jersey and has a medical condition called cleidocranial dysplasia about which he has spoken openly. In what show does he star? And I have an easy mode. I'm locked in. Well, since I didn't understand most of those words, (laughs) um, I understood TV show. Mm -hmm. I'm locked in. I'll take the easy mode. Easy mode is it is a Netflix show. Hmm. <laughs> Theory is the worst thing that ever happened to the show. <laughs> I mean, that narrows it down a lot from like all TV shows to the TV shows on Netflix, which technically yeah. isn't. It's really like a saying show. the show is on NBC. <laughs> So we can roll out Fresh Prince. I am locked in. Murphy I'm Brown. In. <laughs> Wonder Years. <laughs> Small wonder. I'm locked in. Anyway, Kells, what's your answer? Stranger Things. Devo? Stranger Things. And Andy? I'm Gumby Dambit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the correct answer is Stranger Things. Mm, I would have thought it would have been Gumby. And yeah, it is. Uh, he They did write his character. They added that to his character uh, because he's so open about it. Basically, it's a it's a disorder that like part of his part of the clavicle isn't there. So like one of the things people with this condition can do is like pull their pull their uh, shoulders so that they almost touch because yeah, they don't ooh. have they don't and have who, um, what person does this. What person what? on the show has? Oh. What person has a disorder? What's the kid? What's the, the Dustin. Uh, character's Dust, name? The Dustin. character is Dustin. Okay, he's a he's Dustin. kind of a shorter, um, uh, he curly does, head he, kid. Part missing of, the teeth. Yeah, missing his front teeth. That's part of the disorder too. Yeah, part okay. of the disorder is you have a whole bunch of teeth. Like he he had a surgery where he re- they removed fourteen extra teeth. Yeah, uh-huh. and he extra? has he wears dentures. Yeah. Um, okay. In fact, he's either started or is working with a, a charity that raises money to provide dental surgery for people with this disorder. That's because, fantastic. I mean, imagine having that many extra teeth in your mouth is 
probably painful and incredibly and, so. And uh, Ugh. anyway, Jeez. so after round one, everybody's tied at thirty. Ooh. All right, it's anybody's wow. game. We might as well not even have played that round. Yeah, that was just a total waste of time. It's a scrat. The only thing that came out of it was a terrible Jimmy Stewart impression. And a really bad Frank Sinatra impression. Yeah. <laughs> All right, category two is geography. Oh, goody. Question one. How many New York boroughs can you get to directly from New Jersey by bridge? Oh, my goodness. Locked in. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I have a guess there's really only it's between one and five it's between zero and five <laughs> really well, it's gotta at least be one i feel like hopefully <laughs> all right deva two okay uh andy i believe it's four. Oh, dang okay. coming kels i said three all right well by my count, looking at uh, Google Maps, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, you can get to Manhattan via the George Washington Bridge, mm -hmm. also through the Holland Tunnel and Lincoln Tunnels. You can get to Staten Island via one of three bridges, and that's it. Oh. That's the, those are the two I figured. <laughs> All right, question two. Beamerville, New Jersey, is home to what type of geographical feature, which is unusual for the area? And I have an easy mode. Beamerville. Geographical feature unusual. Is a BMW plant like a geographical feature? <laughs> I was thinking like it's tropical there. Like there's this one tropical spot. No one knows why. There's a single palm tree in New Jersey. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to need easy mode, please. There is a palm tree in Spanish Harlem. No. Palm tree is not a <laughs> geographical feature. There's an easy mode? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'll take, I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. Uh, easy mode for half points. It is no longer active. I'm locked in. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, I have something that makes no sense, but it's the only I can think of. Okay. That seems weird. I'm locked in. I'm not going first. I'll go first. If the sensei will have me. <laughs> All right, Andy, what's your answer? I, this makes no sense. And I asked not to go first because I'm going to look like an idiot. But the only I can think of geographically that could be active is a volcano. So I have the New Jersey <laughs> volcano. Kels? I also have a volcano. Devo. I was between, I actually started writing down geyser. Then I Ooh. scratched that out and put volcano. Geyser. Well, the correct answer is volcano. Ooh. Oh, really? That's crazy. That's madness. That could be a sci-fi channel original. The <laughs> Beamerville disaster. And it the just Beamerville like a, volcano. The Beamerville volcanoes active. Quick call <laughs> Jimmy Smith's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question three. What is notable about Centralia, Pennsylvania? Locked in. Locked in. I'm locked in. All right, Kells, what's your answer? I said it's exactly in the middle of the state. Okay. Devo? It's on fire. Andy? Vin Diesel is smoky in the fire down below. The Centralia, Pennsylvania story. Yeah, there's a coal mine that's on fire underneath the city. They had to evacuate. It's been on fire what? for like 50 years. The correct what? answer 50. is that it has been on fire since 1962. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. I didn't realize it was that long. Yes. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it's not necessarily a mine. It's just the, the coal veins underneath are. I was thought it was an are, old coal mine. Are a blaze. Well, it started in a coal mine, but the seam is just. Oh, I see. Not, not a blaze Kells. It's smoldering. Smoldering. But oh. it's causing it causes noxious fumes and big sinkholes and it's well, kind of if you if you drive through it or near it the pavement smokes really yeah Ooh. there's cracks in the highway in the, well in the road that come up and it's just leaking that nasty coal smoke 
It's also, trivia nugget, the inspiration for Silent Hill. It is. At the video game? Yes. Because of the, the smoky uh, oh. abandoned city. Oh, I did not know that. Yep, yep. I didn't either. Okay. I read, I, I listened to a podcast about it, and they were talking about how they could have fixed the problem, but nobody wanted to pay for it. And it would have been, you know, relatively cheap to to actually fix it, you know, 45, 50 years ago. But just nobody nobody wanted to pay for it. And so hmm. it just kind of the buck kept getting passed further and further. And and then at some point there's basically nothing they could do to make it to make it stop. Hmm. Wow. It's going to burn out eventually, but it's like hundreds of years. Yeah, it's going to be a while. It's wow. an absurd amount of time. Wow. Okay. It's genuinely fascinating, Kels. You should check it out. Uh, it's very interesting. All right. Question four. What distinguishing feature did the colony of Pennsylvania have that set it apart from all the others? Of the original 13 colonies, I should say. It's a distinguishing feature? You were talking about geography. Uh, um, oh, uh, and I'll I'll make up an easy mode for you. I will take that when you're ready to give it. I'll take the easy mode as well. Comparing to the other thirteen colonies, what does? Oh, I'm locked in. Okay, so Andy's locked in. Kells and Deva want easy mode. Easy mode is it's probably more accurate to say what geographic feature did Pennsylvania not have that all the other ones do have. Oh, I'm locked in. Locked in. Devo? A coastline. Andy? A coastline. And Kells? I said not bordering the ocean. That is the correct answer. It's the only one that does not have a border on the Atlantic Ocean. All right. At the end of round two, Kells has 40, Andy 55, and Devo 60. <sighs> Woo! You know what you got to do, Kels. We got to stop them. Mm? <laughs> <laughs> that brings us to category three, which is state symbols. Oh. Okay. Okay. Milk. Okay. You tread lightly Come here. Come on, milk. I'm just we reading the questions here? that I was provided, except for the ones that I change. <laughs> <laughs> Question one. This Pennsylvania state drink has many uses, including being used as deer repellent. I mean, I might as well roll the dice. I'm like that. <laughs> deer, deer repellent. A beverage that is a deer repellent. I mean, it's it's used as one. It's not marketed it? as one necessarily. <laughs> I'm the only one so far who's gotten a milk question wrong. <laughs> I want to make it clear. I don't know why you're so oh. salty. I got the first milk question wrong. The very first time it came up, I said milkshake. Oh, yeah, you did. Oh, yeah, you took it a little too far. And then I went to Human Resources, and we talked about my my lactose intolerance, and I was assured (laughs) by HR that this wouldn't happen again. And here we are. Aren't aren't you HR? Am I? Damn it. Who are you talking to? He's Norman Bates at this point. (laughs) No. (laughs) I'm I'm mm. locked in. All right, let's start with Andy. Milk. <laughs> Don't weird. sound so excited about it. <laughs> Kels. Milk. And Deva. Milk. Correct answer is milk. How does that <laughs> repel deer? So, if you look it up, there are people who claim that if you sprinkle dried milk or milk mixed with some other stuff on your plants it will keep deer from nibbling on it really really it's a simple concoction of three parts milk and two parts coyote urine (laughs) i don't think that's i don't think coyote urine urine is part i think (laughs) eggs and cayenne pepper are involved (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah, does this milk concentrate come from acme (laughs) <laughs> I, I didn't say it was effective as a deer repellent i just mm. said it's being it used it's used okay. as one sometimes <laughs> by random people who get a recipe from the internet which is probably a joke in the first place but you know i've heard that uh, ice cream is a good weight loss plan 
So that's what I've been working on ice mm-hmm. cream and gravy. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Question two. This Pennsylvania state bug is a beetle in the Lampyridae family. What is the common name of this insect? That's L A M P Y R I D A E. And there is an easy mode. I'll take it. <laughs> okay. So, Devo, uh, for the easy mode is they are very sensitive to light pollution. Oh. Locked in. All right. Kels? Is that a lightning bug? Devo? Lightning bug. And Andy? I locked in prematurely with June bug. Uh, the correct answer is lightning bug or fly or firefly. Yeah. So because uh, they're blinking, it has to do with mating. If there's a lot of light pollution, they can get confused. And so they're actually becoming more endangered. Hmm. What I appreciate about Pennsylvania is they've stuck with Firefly and not canceled it after three seasons as their state bug. 13 episodes, man. It's painful. 13 episodes, right? <laughs> Wasn't <laughs> even three seasons. Nope. <laughs> and they screwed up the episode order. They did. They moved them out of order. But that's for our next podcast, Sci-Fi Doings. <laughs> <laughs> Sci-Fi Southern Style. Sci-Fi yeah. Doings. <laughs> Question three. The New Jersey State Bug will hopefully give you something to buzz about with their sweet treats and green thumb. What is it? I'm locked in. Locked in. Thumbs. I'm calling out Ray Guy. I have no idea what this question means. Okay. Oh, man. Bring me out some special teams. All right. Let's start with Kels. I felt like he littered hints all through the question. I just went with Honeybee. Oh, that makes sense. They help pollinate the, you know, flowers. Mm -hmm. I said a bee. Bee, bee, bee. And Andy. Now Ray Guy comes in for his first punt of the day. Pickers away. There's a high, twisting, hang time spiral. Okay, so no bonus points, but uh, between that last question and this next one, I want you guys to guess which one I wrote. Okay. The New Jersey State Microbe is the first significant antibiotic discovered after penicillin and was discovered in a heavily manured field in the state in 1943. It is used to treat tuberculosis, plague, and rat bite fever. What is it called? Rat bite fever. I'm sorry, I dozed off there. (laughs) Rat bite fever. Rat bite fever. Hey, Stan, you want to head out into this field here with all the poo and look for some microbes with me <laughs> that's manure not poo manure is gold poo no, no, is i'm poo. showing more than a heavily manured field and looking for microbes that's the smell of money <laughs> <laughs> smell that that's victory uh, i mean the dude micro. won a nobel prize for discovering this he so did like- this is i'm just trying to think of antibiotics um, I'm locked in. I have no idea. I'm locked in with a guess. This is clearly a Neil question because it's about <laughs> microbes. And I just got to say, this question's full of manure. Ain't even no states had microbes. Right back, fever. <laughs> <laughs> Rat bite. What happens when you get rat bite fever? Do you get on like a white suit? Go go <laughs> dance. You're <on> dancing. <laughs> <laughs> you dance for 15 dancing. minutes, then you die. Yeah. <laughs> Locked in. So I know this is a little bit hard, but I wanted to have at least one sweep. So Whoa. <laughs> we'll see. So if- this was for personal <laughs> reasons. <laughs> Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, what's your answer? Uh, poop erotic. Wow. Kels? Yeah, take it serious, Andy. I said strepto caca. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. That's better. Uh, and Devo? The only thing I could think of is amoxicillin, but I think that's just a derivation of penicillin. So, Well, I'm not going to give you guys a sweep because I'm going to give one of you half points. It's me and it. Is that uh, right? No. The correct answer is streptomycin. Oh. Whoa. Oh. 
antibiotics <laughs> all end with sin of some kind. The C I N. Yeah, you don't tell me that. Or I guess just the N and penicillin. Anyway, so uh yeah, good job, girls. That was nice. I know and you were making a it? joke, but it was I was. <laughs> you kinda so. sort of backed into it a little bit. I'll take it. So two points, five points? I'll give you five. Oh, I'll take five. Wow. I mean, you got half the word, right? You messed Man. around and got a triple double. Man, didn't even have to use my AK. <laughs> 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 All right. At the end of round three, Andy has 65, Kel 75, Devo 85. Anybody's game. Yeah. Let's move on to category four, which is sports. Sports. Oh. Let's go. The Philadelphia Phillies were founded in 1883 and were initially named after what religious group? Crap. Locked in. I've watched all the Ken Burns. I should know this. You just need to watch the extra innings part to really know what baseball is. Oh, about. for the love of God, let it go. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. Um, locked in? I, I'm locked in. Bad, bad fever. Kels? Okay, I said Quakers. Andy? I never remember them being called this, but all I can think of is the Quakers. And Eva? I said the Quakers. Our cancer is the Quakers, of course. Huh. Yeah, uh, Andy, it, it was they were officially named the Quakers, I think, for the first few years. But even at the very beginning, people were calling them the Phillies. And okay. so it only, it only took a few years. I mean, it was still in the 1880s when they became the Phillies. Officially. And the athletics were from Philadelphia, too, weren't they originally? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. That's all, all I could think of for some reason was athletics. And Question two. What was the nickname of the Pittsburgh Steelers defensive line throughout most of the 1970s? <laughs> Locked, in. Locked in. Locked in. Andy? Uh, losers. I wow. do this in honor of my and little brother. brother. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. Wow. He yeah. just blew that up all the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Devo? The Iron Curtain. Right. Uh, Kels? Steel Curtain. Your answer steel is curtain. Steel Son Curtain. Of <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> You were so confident, Davo, but you were so wrong. Which is a thing, just not a football thing. thing. But it's a wrong thing. (laughs) Yeah, I I don't think I'm going to give you partial credit for that one. I don't want partial credit for that. (laughs) And I warn the leaders in this room, there is an iron curtain descending across Pennsylvania. (sighs) I don't even know who that was supposed to be. You you threw that question as a jive to your brother. I don't hear junk from you. I'll uh, take it from Kells because he I'll got it right. take it. Uh, it's worth the points. All right, question three. Despite how poorly they seem to play, the New York Jets, who play in East Rutherford, New Jersey, are only the 27th worst winning percentage of the 32 NFL teams. What team is in the 32nd slot? Oh, I want it to be the All Raiders. time? It's not. It's all time. And there's, it's not. There's, no, they're in the top ten. There's an easy mode if you want it for half points. I'm trying to decide between two. I can't afford another. Oh, no. Nah, I got three. I got three really good ones. So do I. Um, I'm going to lock in. Iron Curtain. <laughs> Focus up, man. <laughs> Get it together. I'm locked in. I'm going to take the easy mode. Okay. So the easy mode is. They recently acquired a quarterback with as many Super Bowls as the Steelers at the time of the trade. Oh, man, this was one of the ones. I'm it was. In. All right, Deva? I said the Saints. Kels? I said the Buccaneers. Andy? I said the Browns. Correct answer is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with a 39.3% winning percentage. Wow. Yeah, I, I was... I was on the Browns, the Lions, the Bucks, and the Saints. Ooh, Lions. Yeah. I was on Atlanta was in there for me too. Oh, yeah, I was thinking was trash about Atlanta. For, for a long space. Decades. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Question four. 
What longtime Philadelphia basketball player built a mansion called Ursa Major in Bel Air when he was traded to the Lakers? Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. All right. Kels? Since he was the Big Dipper, I went with Wilt Chamberlain. Andy? Magic Johnson. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I don't know basketball. <laughs> But stop you can at least stop laughing set. at me. <laughs> didn't you say a center, Neil? Was I that in the question? I, I don't say know. What position he played. Oh, okay. Well, you, you just got, you assumed that. I did. Deva? Wilt Chamberlain. Yep, his uh, nickname was the Big Dipper, and so he built a mansion called Ursa Major. Oh, I get it because of, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are we on tape delay with you, Andy? <laughs> You're, you're not that far away from Brain Ladle headquarters. <laughs> Same delay. I, I'm Tucker today. I, I think since we're all online, it, it would be latency. It's the issue. Oh, come on, Neil. 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 <laughs> so do you know why uh, Wilt Chamberlain uh, was called the Big Dipper? Um, He used chewing tobacco? No. It's, oh. The wow. way he... I, I think it has something to do with the the way he would dunk the ball. Nope. Didn't have anything okay. to do with basketball, actually. Oh, well, I haven't. Was he into astrology? No. <laughs> his friends called him that because he had to dip his head every time he went through a doorway. Oh, <laughs> I like that. I mean, that's the story I read. I, I don't know if it's true or not. All right. At the end of category four, Andy has 75, Deva 105, and Kells has the lead with 110. No, oh, stupid iron curtain. <laughs> <laughs> Category five is foods. Foods. Oh, foods. Is. oh, please be seafood. I'm good at that. I've been terrible at these. <laughs> Not in Pennsylvania. They don't have a coach line. <laughs> <laughs> they got them fish sticks. I took out the seafood question. Yay. Question one. New Jersey is known for a dish called the Trenton tomato pie. What primarily differentiates a tomato pie from a pizza? Locked in. Locked in? I'm probably going to get a whole slew of questions or uh, complaints from people <laughs> saying that there's a lot of things that differentiate them, but I'm locked in. All right, Dave? Uh, I said it was cooked in a pie pan, like it's like a apple pie kind of dish, like it's cooked in a, that kind of pan rather than a pizza stone. Okay. Kels? Uh, I said no cheese because I have no idea what a tomato pie is. And Andy? The sauce is on top of the cheese. Oh. The correct answer is the order of the toppings. It goes crust and then cheese and then what are the, whatever toppings you want to have and then the sauce on top. Isn't that Chicago style? That sounds like a Chicago. A deep it is. It's Chicago. very similar. Yeah. It's okay. crazy. Except it's I guess, not crazy. It's delicious. Are the toppings on top of the sauce with the Chicago style? Well, the sauce is thinner and the, the toppings are in there. Okay. So it's more of a soup. It's not like yeah. a soup. No, <laughs> it's, it's not a soup. This is, this is, <laughs> I've, I've tried soupy. the Chicago deep dish thing and, you know, with, I, I don't know. I just, I don't get it. I don't really like the tomato but sauce that much. But we've talked before, you are against joy. <laughs> I like a good pizza. A, a, a good Neil, pizza. How do you feel about Detroit word. style? What's Detroit style? What is Detroit style? Square. Oh. Oh, so like the school cafeteria pizza? No, it's got a thicker crust. <laughs> and, and, and the cheese goes all like melts around the edge. Just don't knock that school cafeteria pizza. That's some good stuff. Oh, not but, anymore. It's a, it's a square, and the cheese is kind of on the bottom, too, so the cheese gets all crispy. Oh, huh. That's okay. good. Look for Detroit style. It's delish. All right. Question two. Invented by Forrest Mars in 1941 in Newark, these confections were the first candy in outer space, the official candy of the 1984 Olympics, and are known worldwide. What Locked is this candy? In. And for a bonus, what is the name of the British candy that inspired them? Oh, I've had them. I'm locked in. Locked in. All right, Dave. Well, my son Simon calls them Nim Nims. Aww. 
So M and M's. And the bonus? Nope. <laughs> Kels. <laughs> Uh, I got this all the way wrong. I said Milky Way. You said out of this world. But, um, and I guess Galaxy Bars. All right. And Andy. Uh, M&M's, uh, they were inspired, inspired by Chicago style pizza. It's weird. Huh. Crazy. That is incorrect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the bonus part is they, they right. are obviously M&M's. Kells, you should have gotten that one. So 84 games? I was negative one years old. You've had an M&M before in your life. Was that the only yeah. part of the question? What candy was the <laughs> that official? I paid attention wow. to. Yeah. <laughs> you said um, out of this world, though, right? What? Did no. I? Well, can you remember They the went question? to space. They went to space. They it was went the first to candy outer in space. space. The first candy they in outer went, space. Oh, no. Nah, I figured it had something to do They're with They're not from outer space. <laughs> None They're of it is, They're not harvested Andy. from outer space. <laughs> A Mars bar isn't from Mars, Kells. It's just a clever moon name. pies don't come from the moon. <sighs> they should all go there because they're terrible. Oh, oh, you take I'll, that uh, back. You take that back. You take I that to be in a off of this, this show. I won't. I as far won't. as the banana ones go, I agree. But the regular chocolate ones, I, I those are good. The banana I ones mean, are truly foul. You get me a moon pie and an RC Cola. Oh, come on. Anyway, would you like to hear the answer to the question? Oh, sure. Uh, it huh. is M&M's mm-hmm. and the British candy that inspired them. Actually, so apparently Forrest Mars was, he was watching soldiers during the Spanish Civil War for some reason. I don't know why. Eating these candies that were chocolates that were candy coated so that they wouldn't melt. And they were British candy called Smarties. Huh. Weird. So British people oh. who come to the United States and buy a pack of Smarties may be very, very disappointed. Disappointed. <laughs> Sorely <laughs> deceived. <laughs> All right. Question three. Charles Hires of Philadelphia was the first person to commercially produce root beer, which was made using the root bark of what tree? I always thought it was the root beer tree. <laughs> it's the what tree? The root? <laughs> what? what was that? The root. The root, root for the root beer tree. Root. Like Groot. Um, <laughs> I'm locked in. Oh, I just got that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> wow. Locked in. I'm locked in. Andy? Sassafras. Devo? I thought it was sarsaparilla. And uh, Kells? Sassafras. The most correct answer is sassafras, but I will also accept a different but related plant called the sarsaparilla. That's right. So did I get any points or am I just putting a big old X on my paper? <laughs> no, you, you got it. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> so hires, of course, he didn't uh, invent root beer. It was, uh, it was made by the Native Americans that lived here much Right, for, for a long, long time. And a lot mm-hmm. of people made their own versions of it. And he took like he took his aunt's recipe and mass produced it or something mm-hmm. like that. So if you guys are interested in some sci-fi doings, there oh is a gosh. wonderful soliloquy <laughs> in Deep Space Nine between Quark and Garrick on the subject of root beer. Oh, I remember that. It is outstanding. It is outstanding. Yeah. Look it up. That's your sci-fi doings of the day. (laughs) And finally, question four. This company founded in Sharpsburg and now headquartered in Pittsburgh is known for making condiments. What company? Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. Deva? Heinz. Kels? Heinz. And Andy? Heinz. Correct answer is Heinz. So, you know, when they came up with their logo, the 57 flavors thing. 57 varieties. Yeah, varieties. Sorry. They already had more than 60. He just thought it sounded better that way. Supposedly. (laughs) It didn't actually mean anything. Right. It doesn't. And so the story I've heard is he would ride a commuter train and every day he passed a factory that made paint. And this factory had a slogan similar to 57 
colors of paint or something. And he really liked the kind of rhythm of that. Yeah. And wanted to do that on his ketchup bottles. That's what mm-hmm. I heard too, except it was, I didn't hear it as paint. I heard it as like shoes or something. But okay. It doesn't matter. It, that's the gist of it is the same. Hmm. At the end of round five, Andy has 115, Kells 130, and Devo 135. Okay. Which brings us to history. Fart in a jar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fart in a jar is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting uh you're getting emails from allison uh, about <laughs> i came up with a new one dave i'll try this try this one out Fart <laughs> sandwich yeah they're training in the morning like real yeah. early like Mr. <laughs> you're the best All right. <laughs> question one which european country was the first to claim land in new jersey or in what is now new jersey Locked in. I'm locking in and taxing Andy. Uh, why well, not think of that? I'm locked in. All right, let's start with Andy. It was the Dutch. Devo? I said the Dutch or the and Netherlands Charles. or Holland or whatever. <laughs> I guess the Netherlands. Correct answer is it was the Dutch West India Company. So the Netherlands. Hooray. Question two. In 1858 in Haddonfield, New Jersey, William Hopkins discovered the first complete one of these in North America. What was it? Locked in. I'm locked in. I haven't the slightest idea. I'm going to punt. All right. Devo? Uh, fossil of a dinosaur. Oh. Uh. And Kells. Now Ray Guy comes in for his first punt of the day. Kick is away. There's a high, twisting, hang time spiral. And Andy. Dinosaur skeleton. Correct answer is a complete dinosaur skeleton. Do you know which dinosaur? No idea. I was worried that I'd have to know it. No, you don't. But uh, in Haddonfield, it was the Hadrosaurus. Oh, wow. Cool. How lucky was that? I know. What a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. Did you know? Never mind. This might come up. I just realized <laughs> no, this could be, a, thing, this could be another question, so I'm going to keep my mouth shut. There's no more dinosaur-related questions, if that's... <laughs> it probably had nothing to do with dinosaurs. <laughs> sort of does. Question three. What two U.S. presidents were born in Pennsylvania? For five Ooh. points each. Ah, crap. Locked in. I you tax it again, Andy, I would. I know. Because I got nothing. <laughs> hmm. One I know for sure and one I'm a little concerned about. I'd really love to tax Andy right now, but he doesn't seem sure. Well, I'm going to punt because I don't know. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'm like, dude. All right. I am going to tax Kells. Wow. That's hurtful, actually. It's very hurtful. You're going to make me do math. No. And just for that, Andy, I hope I'm wrong. Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> the, way you, uh, the way you came to it, I'm pretty sure you're right. Ah, man. it's. I, I can tell by your voice you're right. The thing is, Andy... The obvious one came to me later. Is the thing. me too, and that's why I can tell. <laughs> Gosh, I wish I was inside y'all's head because there's none of them that oh, make any you sense. You can't come up with either point. one of them. No, I punted. Okay, one of them you're gonna be a little upset with yourself. Yeah, about. one of them you're gonna be mad about. All right, let's start with Dave. Now Ray Guy comes in for his first punt of the day. Eh. Kick is away. Ooh. There's a high eh. twisting end <laughs> time spiral. <laughs> And move on to Kells. One of them, I believe, is the current president, <laughs> Joseph Robinette Biden. And I believe James Buchanan is the yes. other one. Yes. Okay. And Andy. 
Yeah, I thought I came up with Buchanan first, and I was stumbling around. Then remembered, oh, duh, Scranton, um, and that's the way Kells came up with it too. I oh tell. yeah, Scranton boy. Okay, <laughs> okay. The correct answers obviously are Biden, who kept talking about being from Scranton, even though I think he moved away from there when he was like a very small child. And the other one was Buchanan. So. Final question. The University of Pennsylvania is one of the oldest in the United States. Who founded it in 1740? Locked in. Locked in, and I'm texting Andy. Damn it. Yeah, it's not fun, is it? <laughs> no. You of all people should know that, and yet you abused your power. And look where it, look where it got you. <laughs> I did not abuse my power. You did. You didn't have to do it, but you did. And I hope you're satisfied. <laughs> I'm locked in. So the interesting thing about this tax thing is that if it's used successfully by all three of you, mm -hmm. then for two of you, it ends up being a wash and only one of you actually benefits from it in the end. Mm -hmm. Much like taxes. <laughs> no, in taxing, nobody benefits except the government. <laughs> it is true. Let's start with Andy. Ben Franklin. Devo? Ben Franklin. And Kells. It took everything in me to fight putting William Penn, but I went with Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> that was my parenthetical, my man. Yeah, William see. Penn was dead by 1740, wasn't he? I would imagine sure. so. Yeah. If I knew that, I wouldn't have put it on my paper. What does Pennsylvania translate into? Uh, Penn's Woods. Penn's Woods, very good. Penn died in 1718. So Andy, he was dead before you. Ben Franklin was born, probably. Mm -hmm. Look at Andy knowing history and whatnot. You wow. should teach this, man. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> you got a gift. Our final scores are Andy with 148, Kells with 160, and Deva 172. A whole lot of taxing going on in that last round. So... Once again, we are at our final question, which is worth mm -hmm. up to 100 points. Mm -hmm. Finding a top 10 list that relate, relates to two states is challenging. Mm -hmm. And I kind of cheated, went to an old standby. I have the top five cities by population in, in Pennsylvania and the top five one. in New Jersey. <laughs> so name... Those 10 for 10 points each. Okay. okay. Five in PA and five in New Jersey. All yeah. Right. If you give me six in PA, then mm -hmm. you automatically miss one because right. I want the top <laughs> five in each place. You think trivia is your ally. I was born into trivia, molded by it. Witness the destruction of these three fools in a moment. While we cobble together some semblance of an answer to this final question, after this show, head on over to the Misinformation Trivia Podcast. It is a trivia podcast for ladies and gents who love cool trivia and sticking it to annoying teams at pub quizzes. Are you that annoying team? Would you like to not be an annoying team? Listen to them. They're a good show. And now, back to the show. I'm just going through Bruce Springsteen songs at this point. <laughs> well, I've named all four cities I know in New Jersey. So hopefully all four hit. Me too. Holy crap. Know. Now I got to find one. <laughs> Damn it. Bruce didn't write a lot of songs about Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm going to just have to go with cities I've heard of. The joke I was going to make earlier in in the history thing, when we were talking about the dinosaur, um, the first major oil discovery in the United States was in Oil Creek, Pennsylvania. And I always make that joke with my students. What were the odds? <laughs> I mean, how long were they looking? How many of them get it? A, a few. You know, I'm funny. <laughs> I'm locked in. I'm done. By the way. I am. Uh, I'm, I'm done in. too. 
I'm locked in. Okay. So let's start with Pennsylvania. I'll go down the list. Number one is Philadelphia. Got it. With about 1.6 million people. These are 2021 estimates. Uh, Pittsburgh, about 300,000. Got it. Allentown, 121. Got it. Thank you, Billy Joel. And then uh, 93,000 is Erie. Yep. Uh, oh, I was between Erie and... All right. And then with about 88,000, let's take a ride on the Reading. Oh, crap. Uh, or I reading. had Harrisburg, is it reading too. Or reading? Reading. I thought it was Reading. It's Reading. It's Reading. It's reading. Look how it's spelled. It's Reading. I mean, it's let's reading ridiculous knob. Uh, think about what you just said there, Dave. <laughs> what now? <laughs> is it just like it's spelled? It's R-E-A-D, which can be either read or read. Yeah, but I'm thinking of it in the current time. <laughs> nah. <laughs> what are you talking about? All right. Uh, let's move on to New Jersey. Mm. Um, 282,000 is Newark. Newark. Got it. How did I miss Newark? <laughs> Son of a... <laughs> Number two is Jersey City. Yeah. yeah. Got About 260,000. Then Patterson, 144. Oh, no. Nope. With 130,000 is Elizabeth. Nope. No. Oh, come on. And then finally, I'm pretty sure I've heard of this town, but I had no idea it was 90,000 people, is Tom's River. What? Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. I did. I felt so good about this list. Atlantic until you just City, read that. Trenton, Hoboken? Nope. <laughs> I, I don't know. I blame the list wow. that I found. Not East Rutherford. No, nothing. Nope. Harrisburg, Hershey. Man. Man. Let me, let me find another list here. And oh, no. Over. You're probably good. You're we fine. Just, you're you're we likely just, good. Yeah, we're, we're just good. Just I'm an expert on populations of New Jersey. <laughs> so I'm seeing Hoboken at like 50,000, Hackensack, 43, Atlantic City, 38. Trenton is 82. So Trenton was pretty close, but not there. Camden, 73. Oh, I about Camden. Passaic is number nine with 69,000. East Orange, 64,000. Uh, East Orange. So it looks like New Jersey just has a whole ton of smallish towns mm. and no like huge metropolises. It's and when you got to be on the lookout for rat, rat bite fever, you want to spread out. <laughs> <laughs> Rant about you Stop it. Did you have to do that, Kels? I'm sorry. I didn't know you're what like was starting at, back up. Like that picking was... out a scab. Yeah, you were right. finally it's, healed it's... over and you just kind of reopened. <laughs> I'm it. right there. It's always there, Kels. It's that gonna was extremely, happen. Extremely poor judgment on my part. I apologize. I was <laughs> yeah. All right, Andy, how many did you get right? <laughs> I got four. Four? That brings you to 188, and you are currently in the lead. Kels? Yes! I win! I Good got, night, everybody! I got five. Five oh. brings you to 210. Uh, you're in the lead. And Devo? I got five. Brings you to 222. Uh, so final scores, Devo, 222, Kels, 210, and Andy, 188. Well, yes. Ooh, I think that'll do it. Yes! <laughs> I think that'll do it. Wow. Wow. Yep. Yeah, Devo Andy just clinched the tournament. Wow. Andy Woo. dropped a turd in the sports uh, category. Well, I mean, you know, there's an asterisk <laughs> with Which the tournament is... win. Well, they're, they're, they're not sensei questions. We all oh. went up against a sensei. Oh, so um, this is... This yeah, is him winning just, the championship. There's, there's the an Astra. I mean, you you won a tournament, but no. I mean, this is no. I these think, are I think everybody are, will agree with me. These are sensei me. approved questions. Yeah, sensei approved. So. I've, I've mm. gone through every one of these. I've replaced. I don't know if I if maybe one out of five of these are are mine, and I reworded some five. of the other ones. One out of five. Sensei approved. You answered but, milk in every episode. <laughs> Except one. <laughs> you cost me 10 points. So uh, 
not to ruin the fun. You went down to the minors and you brought up your average. There's nothing embarrassing about that. Holy. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to take my win, which is not tainted in any way. <laughs> not So not to ruin the fun for anybody, but because, you know, I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> Devo has clinched the lead, but mm-hmm. there is a scenario in which Kells could pull off a win or a second place win, huh. which would be Kells would have to win the next two mm-hmm. and Andy would have to lose the next two, which is uh, very possible because school has started and my brain <laughs> is scrambled. That would put Kells ahead by one in the tournament points. But oh. anything other than that, we know who, what the tournament rankings are going to be. Oh, look at that. I'm so happy. <laughs> Congratulations, Davo. I'm just joking. There's absolutely no asterisk. Oh. Well fought. A commanding victory. <laughs> Thank you. So why do I, why do I win, basically? <laughs> I feel so happy. <laughs> so you could, oh. you could let Simon play the next two two games yeah. and still win the tournament i could not get disrespectful about it let's just not let's <laughs> no, I just like all the different ways we could play this out of nowhere <laughs> i it's only i'm a founding member of this podcast i came up with the idea of tournaments i lost all of them until today <laughs> yeah. so do happy. you believe in miracles yes i am the cub slash red Sox of this podcast <laughs> This is like if Susan Lucci came up with the idea for like the, with the daytime <laughs> Emmys. Yeah. And didn't win until she won. <laughs> yeah. So that's, this is where yeah. we're at right now. This is history. Yeah. Guys, this is history. Thank you very much. Kells goes down. Kells goes down. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dan and Allison, the Danison, for the wonderful tournament. Thank you, Neil, for reading the questions so well. Thank you, Kells and Andy, for playing. And I'm just so happy. I don't know what to say. So from all of us here at the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast, this is your MC Davo with Kells. I believe a wise man once said, um, ain't no party like a Scranton party because a Scranton party don't stop. Look out for the strangler. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, we live in a Devo world. So long, little brainers. <laughs> and the Sensei Neil. Here's an oldie but a goodie from Academy Award and Grammy winning New Jersey native, Bruce Springsteen. I was bruised and battered. I couldn't tell what I felt. I was unrecognizable to myself. I saw my reflection in the window. I didn't know my own face. Oh, brother, are you going to leave me wasting away? On the streets of Philadelphia. <laughs> We, I wanted to go with an upbeat so kind of laugh at. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! See, it's a New Jersey Thanks. guy singing about Philadelphia. In That's the movie. so appropriate. Uh, well, Signing off. <laughs> <laughs> what does Obi Five K know about dying? I, I would have thought. I would have thought Lyric Bot would have done "We Are the Champions" by Queen. The adventuring party enters the tavern. At the far side of the room, you see a mysterious figure in a dark black cloak. He rises and approaches the adventuring party. What say you, Neelith the Wise? Visit us on Twitter at Little Brain or on Facebook at Brain Little Productions. What say you, Kelsius the Mighty? Or you could look for us at our website, brainladle.com. And what say you, Andronicus the Fool? Well, we'd also appreciate it if you could check us out there on Patreon and support us. A uh, $10 sustaining membership will allow you to be on the show itself. And uh, you can also listen to special episodes. And it's all very cool and keen. Does, does everything have to be about the Beatles, Andy? Yep. This is a medieval fantasy setting. Why the Beatles? It's in jolly old England. Ugh. Speaking of in trouble, if milk enters into any of these questions, I will lose my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought Tommy Dorsey and Frank Sinatra were both uh, under contract with the label, but it wasn't like Sinatra was 
part so, of Dorsey's orchestra. In 1939, he, uh, he replaced Jack Leonard as the lead singer of the Tommy Dorsey band. Well, I did not know that. That's interesting. He received $125 a week. Wow, swimming in the money. <laughs> Come on, Dal Face, I'll buy you a steak. In 1939, <laughs> I don't know that that's that bad. No, that I mean, was a terrible Frank Sinatra impression, and I want my <laughs> all comments about my Jimmy Stewart impression stricken from the record. Oh no, it's staying. It's oh, come staying. On. Come on, it's staying. They're both staying. Two wrongs don't make a right. <laughs> it's just Hello. two wrongs. Oh, I feel boy. terrible. People are teasing you for your <laughs> accent. <laughs> How awful that must be for you. That's terribly <laughs> endearing, though. Yeah, <laughs> it's so wrong. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard the Queen actually speak. I mean, the real <sighs> Queen, not Andy. I don't think I have either. I have. Maybe I just don't go out of my way. You know. She spoke. You should listen more, Sunny Boy. <laughs> <laughs> She's <laughs> she <laughs> hasn't. Oh man, Andy <laughs> is in the neighborhood, but it's the wrong house. Basically, his impression. <laughs> what are they doing in sci-fi right now? <laughs> what are they doing they on that Battlestar Galactica? <laughs> that star, What's that she star just, keep oh doing? Oh my god, that girl needs some help. <laughs> What's <the> sci-fi doing? <laughs> oh man. I don't know, there might be something to that. <laughs> yeah, that's every show. What that Kylo Ren doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know that ain't right. <laughs> he just stabbed his daddy. That, that, Kylo right. Ren, that Kylo Ren needs to go to church. He's got the Satan on him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if Han and Leia just gave that boy a whooping every now and again, he'd be fine. Mm -hmm. I swear, if they just put one on his tail when he was a little fella. <laughs> they wouldn't have none of this dark side nonsense I do so wish this Ken Burns series was over signed Mary Chestnut <laughs> the preceding podcast was presented by Brain Ladle Productions all rights reserved <laughs>